All right. <laughs> We're back up, apparently. Hold on. What's up, everybody? Sorry. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Uh, it froze. No, my entire... My entire, uh... Stream PC just, like, shut down and restarted. That was really weird. Okay. We seem to be back up, though. Uh, I guess that's what I get for not shutting it down too often. I shut my gaming PC down every single day, like, as soon as I'm done. But my stream PC, sometimes I leave it on because I'm working on stuff. I don't want to, like, you know, have to, like, redo things. So I guess that's what I get. Okay. Um, back to packing. Hopefully you guys saw me putting, like, my branding logo on there or my branding sticker on there. Um, yeah. MJ, how we doing? Hold on, let me make sure I'm getting the right chat for YouTube. Probably not. There we go, okay. Now I'm seeing the correct chat for YouTube. Super official, what's up? Butcher Block, how we doing? Good to see you. MJ, good to see you over there as well. Okay, so yeah, we got our, our little uh, branding on there. Now, the way we do our shipping, well, I should say I, the way I do my shipping here, is I do that, put it back in its original box, put a little extra packing material in the original box, and then put that in a bigger box which is, again, surrounded by foam and um, industrial bubble wrap. And then we're ready for shipping. I really wish less, I, would, I wish fewer case manufacturers would use this like cheap styrofoam um, for their cases because it really does tend to get beat up in shipping. Okay, there we go. Like, both the top and bottom got cracked in shipping. That's okay. That's okay. Question, what's your thoughts on a liquid cooler called ID cooling? I've never used them. Um, I don't know. I personally would not go for something that that cheap if you're gonna go liquid cooling. Like if you're really trying to stay in budget, you might as well just like get yourself a solid air cooler for that sort of price rather than having to worry about a cheap cooler where your pump might fail on you after like six months or you know have really noisy fans, you know? Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to be really gentle with this because of those uh, um, cracks and stuff in the styrofoam. I want it to be intact when I get it back in this box. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so it's back in the box like that. Loop of duct tape all around both wouldn't hurt. Yeah, you don't really need that. You really just need it to stay in place for when I put it back in here. That's really all I need it for. Because once it's back in the box, the compression of the compression of the cardboard is going to hold it all in. Okay, so got the glass on this side and the bottom on this side. So we're going to use some of these lovely air pillows that we get with like every single shipment of stuff in here. Give a little extra cushion inside. Look at that. Let me feel less than that. Okay. Because it's 80 bucks, I can spend, yeah, I would get like a, spend spend like the like $100 and get like a deep cool AIO or like an Arctic AIO or um, even like the team group AIOs are really good. 
Corsair is fine. They're just, they're a little bit more expensive for the quality. Like you get like the same kind of quality, but for a higher cost, you know? All right, so next we've got some of these accessories. These are just kind of all of like the info packets and manuals that come with the various parts. So we're gonna shove that down in there. And then we've got a bunch of like spare parts stuff too that we need to put in there. So the main thing is I wanna keep everything that he like needs to have ready at hand in one baggie. So in here we're gonna have Wi-Fi adapter, power cord, and then this is a Windows 11 backup. So that's just if he, um, if for whatever reason his Windows gets corrupted or something, um, he'll be able to just take this and reinstall Windows from it. You just deflated a long length of those things. I know, I use them. My wife gets rid of them sometimes, but I use them a lot, so I have to keep them. Yeah, Arctic, when you're talking just price to performance and you don't care so much about like RGB or anything like that, Arctic is a great, great option. That's what I have used on my gaming P or my, yeah, my old gaming PC for a long time. Okay. So this is all just like kind of extra stuff. Don't think this baggie is gonna fit in here because it's real thick. So we'll have to leave that one out. But all these little boxes, we can kind of just stick down in here. Like this. Just kind of sticking them on top. And then we're gonna do the same treatment on the front side with these little air pillows. Just kind of keep that all nice and safe. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome, Butcher. Yeah, and really kind of the key thing for me, Butcher, is like, you know, we can, you can always save a little bit of money here and there by getting um, stuff that's maybe less flashy, but you never want to sacrifice the performance and quality of your computer to save money. Like maybe you save like performance in the sense of like, you buy a, uh, you know, like a 4060 instead of 4060 Ti or whatever, but you never wanna sacrifice like the quality of your components. Cause that's just gonna, you're just asking for trouble there. Um, so here's all this bag full of stuff. We're gonna put that right in here. Make sure that it's easy access when he opens the computer. I might have to remove a couple of these air pillows. They're kind of tall. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I don't really want to have to remove these air pillows on top, but it's kind of, oh, it's mostly that, uh, it's mostly the, that guy over there, I think. Okay, that'll be fine. It's that mouse pad. Mark Wagner, what's up? Grandpa Slow Snipe, how you doing? Thank you for coming in. Uh, I'll look into that. Don't care much for the RGB. I already got seven other RGB fans in the case. Yeah, exactly. Um, then yeah, the Arctic is gonna be a great option for you there just to like save money and have good quality and performance. All right, that's all nice and closed up. So that and that are gonna have to go into the main box, which <laughs> We're gonna have to see how well I can bring you guys along with me here. Um, not sure how much length we have. Okay. There we go. Okay, you guys don't really ever get to see this, but this is my this is like the back room. This is where I kit up all of my builds and I have all my storage and uh, shipping information or information, storage and shipping stuff. Um, my old gaming PC right now is on the floor in here um, that I use as my test bench. But uh, this is how we, this is how we pack stuff up. Get a box here. Go get my tape that I left in here for some reason. Also, I will not be able to really read chat while I'm in there, so I'll come back occasionally and read chat. 
Arctic also has, yeah, they, Arctic also has RGB available. If that breaks in transit, then they really did some too. Exactly, Butcher, that's kind of the idea is I wanna build, like I don't wanna have to like deal with, with UPS and insurance and stuff ever. So I do everything I can to really, really protect stuff. Cause I, I've, and I've learned over time, you know, what can happen if you don't go a little over the top. So I, I spend about mm, somewhere between 15, probably somewhere between 15 and $20 in packing material on each PC. Okay, so got all that on there. And because I'm still trying to use up this tape, which I bought on Amazon and it's not very good, um, it likes to kind of come off. So I kind of have to do a little something something around here, like this, to hold it all on. Make sure it doesn't like come loose or anything. Okay. But I've got, I've got some good scotch tape. Like I got a eight pack from Costco to use up next, but um, I'm not gonna waste the all that tape I bought previously. All right, let's take another look in here to see what we got. It's nice that you actually take the time to protect it. Good business most places. Yeah, exactly. That's something that I see a lot of places don't do very well. And I don't have the time, the money or the like, um, you know, I don't have customer service people across the nation to take care of stuff for me, you know? Like, I don't have I don't have that option. So we gotta we gotta do it right the first time, you know? Alright. So first we're gonna layer the bottom. Oops. I just cut a couple of uh cut a couple bubbles there. I'm gonna layer the bottom here with uh, foam. We're gonna do about an inch of foam on the bottom of this one. This is nice open cell foam that is very springy, very protective. Again, sorry, I can't read any chat while I'm in here, but I will read them once I once I get a chance to go back out there. These are each, these are quarter inch, quarter inch sheets. I used to use half inch sheets, but the pricing on the quarter inch sheets is actually a lot better. So I just have to cut double the, double the number of strips. Okay, so we got an, we got our inch of of uh, packing material down there. We're gonna get our computer now. Bring it in here. Check check the comments real quick. Body count, what's up, bubble popper? I know, right? I could go nuts with that thing. Okay. Oh God, I put my. Put my camera right in the freaking doorway like an idiot. Okay, so then I put this in here, glass side up. Um, I'm not sure how much you guys can see. I should probably check. Oh, you guys can't quite see what I'm doing. Let's let's fix that. There you go. So now that I've got that computer case in there got my inch of foam around the bottom. We will start putting the bubble wrap around the sides. This is a nice big case box, so we don't actually need a ton of bubble wrap. And then this bubble wrap, this is half inch tall bubble wrap with like 12 inch perforated sections. And it's 24 inches wide, which is the same width as the, um, the, oh, the outside box that we use. So makes it nice and easy. So let's do that. Just gonna do a couple of strips there. Got two strips there. Snug it up against the edge there. Looks like we're gonna have two there and maybe one on that one. We might be able to snug two in on that one, but. So the reason why I do this is one, 
There's a lot more cushion for when stuff like comes in contact with the box or if the box is bouncing around. Like you have a double layer of cushion between what's happening to the outside of the box and what's actually happening to the computer itself. Because remember, there's some packing material inside of the interior box too. So it, uh, it's just as much protection as we can possibly put. That's what we're doing. All right. So that's all good. Now we just need to put these. This is the rest of just the extra power cables that weren't used in the computer itself because we didn't need them. But in case he ever upgrades down the road, he has them. And now we just fill to the top with more of this industrial bubble wrap. I'm gonna grab a bunch of these, maybe like six links to start off with. Okay, then I'm gonna fill in this little area here next to the extra cables with that. And then we can do a couple of layers on top and we should be good. Two, three, four. I really need to get some like, not that I have room for it necessarily, but I wanna get some of those like holders for my foam and my bubble wrap. That way um, it doesn't have to like sit on the floor. I think we could do like one more strip in the middle just to make sure it feels a little more full. Just like this. Boom. Just like that. Uh, there's my tape. Oh yeah, straddle, straddle the box. That's the best way to do it, you guys. I'm gonna move back into there for the last bit. Hopefully without messing up my camera at all. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, there we go. How's everybody doing? I can see you now. I can read all the comments now. All right. Time for our fragile tape. Okay. So, gotta do two more things. Gonna wrap tape along that edge on both sides. So we're gonna run some tape around here. Um, this is mostly just to make me feel better, but practically, it should mean that there's no open seams on the top of this uh, box. So even if some rain should get on the box, it should have a lot of trouble getting into the box. Did you ever have the delivery service really mess up one of your PCs? Um, yes, I have. It's been a long time, but I have had the delivery service mess up PCs. Um, one of them was just the GPU getting damaged in shipping and the box looked pretty pretty messed up. And then the other one was um, when a customer, I had, I had one customer in the entire three and a half whatever years I've been doing this, came back and was like, wasn't happy with um, the noise from like his, his uh, PC and stuff. And like decided after I tried to work with him a bit he wasn't very helpful. He just like wanted to send it back. And I was like, all right, I'll send it, like you can send it back minus the cost of um, like shipping it back to me or whatever. And so he was like, okay, he went to do that. And I told him, I was like, hey, like if you do this, like you need to, I was like, you need to pack it up in the exact same way that I, I packed it up in the original box. And then that box inside of the outer box like you have here. And he didn't do that. Like he did not do a good job of it at all. 
and the, the entire case got destroyed in shipping. And so he had to pay for a new case too. I was like, sorry, like I'll, I was like, I'll give you most of the refund back, but like, that, like this is negligence on your part, not following my instructions and not asking for help that you destroyed the entire case. So we had to uh, take some of that money out. But other than that, other than that, that's pretty much it in the three and a half years. Stephen, yeah, or Stefan, I don't know how, is it Stephen or Stefan? Um, yes, I am a PC builder, you know, engineer by day, PC builder by later in the day. Um, been doing it for, uh, since like the end of 2020. So whatever that, whatever that makes us here, year wise. Um, yeah, I have built last count 174 PCs and it's not perfectly accurate, but it's as best as I can estimate and uh, built for some pretty big names like Stone Mountain 64, Spartacus, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard of like Panda Skills, you know, Player 2 Gaming. Um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people. It did suck, Mark, but it was a long time ago, so I'm glad to be, glad to be done with that. Okay, this thing is literally done. Um, the only thing I have left to do on it is to um, get a label printed, so, Let's, um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you guys that part cause you don't get to see people's names and addresses and stuff. But um, basically at this point, all you gotta do, turn on my little scale here, which can go up to 90 pounds. Put it on hold. Gonna weigh this bad boy. Oh, no, not there. work. I'll do that. Now will you work? There we go. Steven. Okay. Oh yeah. You watched Stone? Dude, Stone was the first content creator I ever watched. So this is just over 49 pounds. So we're going to mark it as 50 pounds and then we'll get a, uh, we'll get a uh, label printed for it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I built the PC, I've built Stone's current gaming and streaming PC, uh, plus all the ones he gave away, uh, like two years ago, I don't know if you remember that, or a year ago, uh, I built those as well. All right. So... Uh, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing over here, but yeah, I'm basically signing into my shipping information or my shipping uh, website and then signing into my payment portal so that I can get the customer's address. This one's going all the way across the country to Pennsylvania, which is a long ways. So. I want to see, guess, guess, so roughly 50 pound uh, computer via UPS. It's two feet by two feet by 16 inches. How much do you guys think it's going to cost to ship all the way to Pennsylvania? Keep in mind, I'm over in Idaho. I want to see some guesses before I walk back onto the screen, okay? He has another, you have about maybe 30 seconds before I finish filling out this form, getting it printed. Time's running out. Get your guesses in, otherwise they don't count. The label's being printed. Or you'll even get to hear it. All right, what do we think, chat? What do we think? What are our guesses here? Stephen thinks, or sorry, Stephen thinks 150 pounds. RK thinks $300. Stone's the best after Dr. Disrespect. Dude, Dr. Disrespect is like an incredible creator. 
So entertaining. Mark Bredos thinks 165. Dan B says $210. Richard, all right, quick, you just got here. What do you think a 50 pound PC shipped all the way to Pennsylvania from Idaho costs? What do you think? Uh, is UPS better for you than FedEx? Yes. UPS uh, for me has had better pricing and, and better, uh, better service. Richard says 175. All right, is, all, is everybody's guesses in? Did we all guess? What do we think? We good? We all, we all get our guesses in? The actual price, I don't know why I'm looking at this, it's not written on here. The actual price, going once, going twice, $76. Yeah. This is why I don't go through UPS directly, and I use ShipStation, because I get like half off shipping costs. Shipping costs are way cheaper for me using ShipStation than they are for uh, the average Joe who just goes directly through UPS or like goes to the UPS store and, and ships stuff through that. Pretty incredible, huh? Oh, you get a corporate discount? Hey, there you go. Yeah, see, it's not bad, 75 bucks. And that's a heavier computer, you know? A lot of the computers, like, you know, if I'm building a computer that only costs, uh, you know, 1500 bucks or 1600 bucks, those only cost, or like, yeah, those are only like 50, $60 to ship sometimes. Or if it's a closer person, like I've had some shipped to like Utah, um, those are only like 30 or $40 sometimes. Whew. This is a heavy computer, y'all. Okay. This is my gaming computer. Ugh. So this is when I play, when I hop on Warzone after building a computer, this is what we're playing on. Um, has an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. It's got a 7900XTX from um, AMD. Whew, I'm out of breath from picking that thing up. And uh, as you can see, it is fully water-cooled. You wouldn't have a clue you're from Northern Ireland. That's fair. Uh, yeah, the distance would be like shipping it um, across the Atlantic to like the East Coast from Ireland. That's about how far it is. Space face, how we doing? Yeah, it's not bad at all, Mark. Richard, you get a corporate discount through, through like the airline companies or whatever? Okay. So I pretty much cleaned this off previously just um, with like my um, with my air duster thing because I wanted to I didn't want to do that on stream because it's so loud um, but we can do a little extra just kind of microfiber cloth clean in here just to get it looking a little nicer this PC is like a year old now and I've probably cleaned it once but because I keep it in like a very non-dusty environment and the fans don't spin super hard because they don't need to, um, it wasn't dusty like at all still. I was I was fully expecting it to be super dusty in there and nasty and it wasn't at all. It was very, I was very um, surprised. Pleasantly surprised I think is the term I was looking for. But whoa, clean off all the little surfaces we can see in here. Cool. Uh, so Ryzen 9 7950X, it's a 7900 XTX, uh, the Founders Edition one, or uh, not Founders Edition, whatever, the AMD spec version, not like one of the third party cards. Uh, we've got 32 gigs of RAM, that's stock speed is at 7200 mega transfers per second. Um, we've got dual 360 millimeter radiators. Here, let me turn this a little bit more for you guys. Surprising your PC wasn't that bad when you took it apart. Yeah, sometimes it's just reference edition. Thank you. I was like, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it's got AMD space face. Uh, so yeah, the Liam Lee 011 Dynamic XL, 300, two 360 um, radiators, 
We've got eight fans in here in total, three along the bottom, three along the intake over there, and then two along the top. Um, I didn't really have a ton of space for an exhaust back here. I know people were, had asked about it previously, but it just like, I didn't need it. I don't need that much airflow. Um, some other cool stuff with it. We got the uh, distro plate from uh, EK Water Blocks. This, this whole thing, by the way, this whole build, I did it on a video. Uh, if you check out YouTube, um, I've got it on a, it's called the $7,000 AMD PC. It's this guy right here. Um, yeah, got this sweet uh, distro plate from EK Water Blocks, and it's really cool. So it acts as the reservoir. The pump is back there on the in interior side, and then it created all these, creates all these channels so that your runs to your various components are super simple. So all of the all of the tube runs on here are just single bends to get to my radiators, to get to my GPU. Actually, my GPU doesn't even have any bends to get to my CPU and then to my top radiator. It's all just single bend tubes here, which is super convenient. Um, but yeah, really the only maintenance I needed to do today is I wanted to clean it and then I want to swap out the coolant in here. So got to do a couple things. First, we're going to undo the top of this so that it has air coming in. And then, uh, then we'll start draining it. And I don't know how aggressive I want to be while draining it as far as like, I don't think I care too much about getting every last little bit of it out of like the radiators and stuff. We can just flush it and then do it again. I know I have like 30 tools in here. I just don't know where they are. Oh, did I leave it in here maybe? You ever seen a PC like this before? Um, yeah, most people don't spend this much money on a computer. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I think this is the right size. Okay, get that cover off. Nope, not the right size. Chunkier than that. I don't know what I did with all my little plastic tools from EK. I know I have them around here somewhere. I just don't know where. Oh, there we go. There's one. Oh, and there's two. So what we need to do here is we're gonna open up this top. This is gonna allow air to take all of the places where the water is like vacating, right? So. All right, so we got that. And I've got a empty bottle of old coolant here is from another build I did earlier this year. So we will drain, we will drain the old coolant out of there into this for now. Yours caught, wait, 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 what did I miss? Can I build a PC into a riot shield? No, I'm just kidding. How did your PC catch fire? I feel like we need to know this story moist. Um, but actually, honestly, I would, I would gladly find a way to make a PC look like it's in a riot shield for you. Worth it. Uh, I'm gonna get some paper towels, just in case. Cause like, you know, it's probably gonna spill a little bit. I think previously I did this with like a bowl or something, but we're just gonna. Come on. Should just pop out. Woo, there we go. How full is this thing getting? I think we're okay. This this holds a liter of fluid, so we should be good for a little while. You can see 
we're getting coolant coming in, like draining out from some of the tubes too. So shouldn't take too much to get more of this out. Okay. So that was quite a bit of fluid. <laughs> Good thing we stopped it before we tried to do any more. I'll close this guy up. And I'll grab, I have another uh, like old gallon jug that I can use to put some more coolant in if we need to, which I think we do. This is the test fluid from um, Land Day's PC. We ran it in there for like a day and then, and then drained it all out. Hey, Rec, I got a good question. Uh, how can I start my own, my own gaming PC business? I would really like to com repair computers that don't know where to start. I mean, do you already know how to repair computers? Like, are you already like certified or whatever, like good at repairing computers? Or do you like not know how to do that yet either? Uh, you game on a PS5 connected to a TV? Hey, you're still a gamer. Um, unless your Spartacus Stone Mountain are red. You're gonna need a much larger budget. <laughs> uh, yes, you do need a much larger budget. You need to get one of these. Uh, when my kid was two, she dumped apple juice onto the water cooler thinking it, it'll help and it short circuited. Oh, yikes. So you know how to build computers and work on them and stuff. You just don't know like how to start the business part of it. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I don't know, I, I probably didn't do mine like the normal way that people would would uh, start their businesses, you know? I, um, I think, what do I wanna do here? <laughs> How much do I care? How much do I care about <laughs> draining all of these out? I don't know. I can't answer that question yet. Okay. Cause I really don't want to have to pressure test it again. Is the thing. What if we just fill it up a couple times, and then keep draining it out until all the old stuff's gone? How about that. Um, so I mean, the way I started it was only eight, an $8,000 mistake. Bro, how, what kind of computer did you have that was $8,000? I mean, I built this myself, but in parts it was less than $8,000 and this was literally top of the line when I built it. Are we mixing coolant? I mean, it would just be, um, no, I've, I'm gonna refill with, with just distilled water. So my thought was I would just refill with distilled water and then drain, like run it for a little while, drain it again, refill it with distilled water, run it, drain it again, um, until it's nice and clear and it's basically all fresh. Did you sell it or just change, or are you just changing coolant? I'm just changing coolant, I'm not selling it. As much as I would love to sell it, I don't think it's really worth um, enough at this point to, you know, make it worth my while. <laughs> Drain the whole thing, Mark says. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it that way. Multiple flushes it is. We'll drain, a, I think we can drain a little bit more out right now. But I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't think it's worth the effort, you know? There's some parts of it that are, would just be really annoying to do, like to get the full drain out. Um, for instance, this guy, this tube here, you're like, oh, that's fine. And then you see over on this corner, which actually you guys can't really see it yet. So you see over here, this actually has a 90 up to that, um, to that point in the distro plate, just because I had to get around these fans. 
So yeah, it just would be, it will be a, an absolute pain to do that. Cause that would mean I literally have to like pull off each of these tubes to get it like empty, empty. And personally, it's not worth it. It's not, it's just not, okay? I hate to tell you, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah, I can run the pump by itself. That is exactly what I intend on doing. I had a custom build with limited edition graphics card, crystal limited edition SSD, RAM, custom build from a guy in Toronto. Shipping alone was 200 bucks. Built to look like a pylon. Okay, so it was like super high end plus like custom, custom uh, case and stuff. Okay, this is, I didn't spill it all y'all. I didn't even spill. Ironic that I have to fill the fill bottle and then I can fill my reservoir. <laughs> so this is just like distilled water from, from the store. Nothing special. And then what I can do later is I can throw a little bit of like iodine, like a drop or two of iodine or something in there just to avoid any bacterial growth. But other than that, you don't need to act like fancy coolant. You can just use, you can just use water. Believe it or not. Ripley's, believe it or not. I hereby volunteer to field test this. <laughs> I mean, I've been field testing this for a year, man. What are you talking about? If I was to get a PC now, max you'd spend is 2,500 bucks. It's fair. Just put it in the bathtub. <laughs> Run the pump while you um, Hatfield, you do realize that I have an office now, right? I don't, um, work from my house. So, I'm not about to take this all the way home to work on it, unfortunately. I think I need to make the the hole on the tip bigger in this thing. Hold on. Can I make it bigger still? Where is that hole? Yeah, I think it's those. I think the tube inside of the, the tip is about as big as it's gonna get. It's okay, we can hang out together. I need to have my wife bring my bring another gallon of distilled water when she comes. Speaking of that, let's uh, let's check. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Are you here? Oh, do you think you could run to this after you drop off the laptop? Do you think you could run to the store and get some more distilled water? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Almost full. Bring the laptop? I said laptop and charger. <laughs> it does not. Thanks. <laughs> Hilarious. Looks like a pain in the butt. Yeah, mostly just because the tip of this thing is um, it's very small. 
So it, the water doesn't come out very fast. That's really the only reason why it's such a pain. He then has to sit there holding the PC. Red's grip would give out in the first five seconds. No, my office does not have a bathroom. I mean, I have a bathroom with a sink, but you realize this thing weighs like 80 pounds, right? Yeah, we're, we're not doing that. I also don't trust that water enough to, to uh, do that. It's not worth it. Um, do I have the original, I think I have the original power cables for this guy here. Thermal take? Is that what I have back here? Thermal take? No, that's an EVGA. Cut the tube to make the opening bigger. Um, cut the tube to make the opening bigger. I already have done that. I think the inside of the tube is actually just really small. Yeah. It's small, like the entire, this little inserted tip, the whole thing is pretty small. Um, I don't think that's the right set of cables. I have the right set of cables, they're just not those ones. I don't wanna to have to disconnect. I'll let you guys know what I'm doing. I don't wanna to have to disconnect the, um, the motherboard power cable because it's a 90, like it comes out at a 90 from normal and it's really hard to get to behind those tubes back there. So what I wanna do is get out the original cable from EVGA, disconnect the power cable, disconnect all the other cables, and then we'll just use the jumper off of this and uh, call it a day. Then we'll run the pump for a little while. Okay. Use a funnel, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. These are all things that I don't have on hand here at the office, like a funnel or a tub or whatever. And so I'm just gonna run with what we got. Okay. Gotta go pick up the girls. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Look at them pearly whites. Okay. So. Got this out of here, just like that. Um, and then now I'm just gonna disconnect all of the main power, or all the cables from the uh, power supply here. I might need to disconnect the power supply, it's, or pull the power supply out in order to, to reach all of them, but I think we're gonna do that. I'm gonna pull the power supply out. Could be a cool place for a PC build shop. This place? Wait, what? Like this would be a good place for a PC build shop? I'm confused. Got to get dinner? All right, we'll see when you get back, Mark. Slacking on tools and supplies. I've got all the tools and supplies I need. out of here. Okay. I totally just realized, you guys, I don't need to do this. What am I thinking? What if we did this the smart way? Hmm? What if we did this the smart way, you guys? Can you guess what I just thought of? Can you guys guess what I'm gonna do? Might have been asked, but how often do you change out the coolant? Um, I'm doing it like once a year on this one. It doesn't get as much use, and it didn't get a ton of use for the first bit of using it. So yeah, about once a year. Um, more often probably isn't a bad idea. Maybe like every six to eight months, depending on how much you're using it. You ever hear the lame joke like you got in a parts store and they don't have anything you need, so you say it'd be a good place for a parts store? Oh, I see. I've got all the parts I need, don't you worry. It's just not maybe the easiest way to do everything. 
you know? Okay, so what we're gonna do here, now that I thought about it, is we're gonna grab a donor, <laughs> this donor power supply that I use for my test uh, bench. And then, do I have the power cables for this guy? Yes, I do. This is why you don't throw anything away, you guys. So, here's what we're gonna do. Rather than unplugging everything, I've got a donor power supply that we can use to power the pump. So all I need to do is put a jumper on this power supply to give to like get it to think it has everything it needs to, to power up. And then I need a SATA cable. We're gonna run this SATA power from here to the pump. I just need to figure out which one the pump is. Okay, so where is that cable coming in at? It's coming in down here. A little bit of a rat's nest back here. There's just so much stuff. Okay, I'm gonna have to undo a little bit of my cable management back here until I can find where this guy goes to. Remember, I built this quite a while ago. Oops, just unplug something. Let's plug that back in before I forget. Another evil idea, add jello to someone's water coolant. Oh my god, no, thank you. You better you better hate that person. Cause if you don't, after you do that, they will hate you. at the wrong cable. I want the thick cable. Oh, it is this one, isn't it? I want to get a little tug. Let me give a little tug on this end. Okay, that seems like the same cable. There's one way to very easily find out. I'm gonna plug it in. Get our jumper out of here. Okay, so a jumper tricks the power supply and being able to turn on. And then, uh, well, let's see if the pump turns on when I do this. Nope. Uh, we might need to double check that the Pump is not connected into anything. Pump right there. Okay, now the pump is not connected into the header, so it should just go full blast. Oh, I didn't plug, <laughs> you guys. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me right now. I didn't plug the power. I didn't plug the power supply in. Ever added glitter or anything to a cool it? No. No, you don't add stuff like that. It's just gonna gum up your system. There it goes. Okay, 
That kind of filled the system back up. So let's, let's put a little more in here. So that we actually run the fresh water we put in through the system. We actually want to get all of that old coolant out. You can see how red this stuff looks and then how faded out this other stuff looks right now. Round two. Maybe you shouldn't live stream PC builds. This isn't a PC build. This is just PC maintenance. I feel like at some point I'm gonna to get to the point where I say, hmm, maybe taking everything off and draining it is actually faster. But this is less work. Pearlescent pigment would be cool. Yeah, any sort of additives that you put into, um, that you put into your coolant is just gonna cause problems. I'm just gonna be honest with you. You're just asking for trouble. Even like the pigments and stuff that they put in from like EK and Corsair and stuff, I don't really trust it long term. Which is why I'm putting just cool, like distilled water in it this time. Because it can leave like a residue on all your cooling components. Don't tell me how to live my life right. I'm not telling you how. I'm just telling you what could happen if you live that way. Oh, you're joking about the power supply. Okay. Bloodbath, how we doing, man? All right. Back to filling her up.
this valve dripping? is the lazy way of doing this. I figure I'll probably do this again in like six months when I get around to changing my thermal paste out again. So it doesn't need to be perfect this time around. Let that circulate for a minute. It's definitely starting to get lighter throughout all of the tubes now. <clears throat> Valve has probably come up with additives. Probably. Doing good, bro. Hope to see mine built on this channel soon. I would love that. I would love that. Did my wife drive, drop off some dinner for me? Ooh, what do we got here? Ooh, chicken pot pie. Mm. That's right, chicken pot pie delivered to my desk. I think after we drain it this time, we're probably gonna need to uh, probably gonna need to empty out our our jug here. Definitely gonna have to uh, empty that out of her <clears throat> after that one, but we'll get it filled up one more time before I before I empty that out. Fill up my fill cup. Mm, let's have some more dinner. Let's 
sorry. If you have to hear me eating, not much I can do about it. All right, let's see if we can open this thing up a little bit more. I've got, a, got my X-Acto knife here. I don't feel like that made it any bigger. We'll find out. Now I know where the dried ranch ring and fingerprints on your mouse pad came from. I think those might have been yours though, General. Mm, so good. I think it's going a little faster. Okay, start her up. I'm gonna go empty <clears throat> this jug of water. Well, this jug of old coolant, I should say. Be right back. Did it out. I think we can do a little bit more <clears throat> to get more coolant out. <clears throat> we can use our handy dandy little pump here when we start draining to pressurize the, uh, 
pressurize the system and force a little bit more water out. Uh, no, I there's within the same building is a uh, pediatric therapy um, clinic within the building. That's the that's all the noise. I think now is their busy time of the day, I guess. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is open up. I guess that one gets fed directly by the. Uh, this one gets fed directly by the reservoir. So I can try and force water through, or force air into the top of the reservoir. Maybe get some more water out of the bottom. see some water moving, coolant moving within the system. Can you tell it was pressurized? <laughs> I don't know if it's actually working. I don't know if that's actually helping or not at all, chat. It was a fun idea, though. Is that pump specifically for this? Uh, that pump is for testing the um, the water loop. Yeah. Sounds like it has a flat. Yeah. It really, really needs to be. I really need to like take out one of these tubes and take that spot rather than it being in the reservoir spot. 
Um, I could put it right above <clears throat> like the GPU and force air out that way. That might not be a terrible, uh, terrible way to go. I can take this tube out um, for the CPU. Let's put that down there just to keep any water from dripping out from the CPU cooler block. Um, so now I've got that side I can close off. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> and then, that's still got some water in it though, unfortunately. Yeah, so the pump is for once you complete the, <clears throat> the cooling loop, um, then you can use that, um, then you use that little pump to pressurize the whole system and check for air leaks. It's a way to ensure that your cooling system, your open loop cooling system is, um, is going to be watertight without putting water in it and potentially damaging components, you know? water out of that. Now, we hook our pump up to that. <clears throat> this kind of isolates the system here a little bit. So now, on this distro plate, oh, is that too tight to the next fitting? Can't fit it on there. Um, I guess I'll just have to use the one that the CPU was connected to. And I'll put this other one back. Okay. Back from the chasm from whence you came. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Should I have a can of duster on there? Face your fingers in the process. What are you talking about, General? Welcome to custom water cooling. Yeah, I've had to do this before. It's just uh, this. This loop is a little bit. A little bit more difficult to do it with, but it's okay. There we go. This works really well because uh, I'm not actually pressurizing the system because all the air is coming out over here once the water makes it to the reservoir. You just got to pump hard enough for <clears throat> the coolant actually to get to the, the reservoir. Now granted, there's still going to be a bunch of stuff probably trapped inside of the radiator itself, but that's okay. That water line's still going up. <clears throat> <clears throat> Seems like it's not right now. I guess I don't need to disconnect that whole thing. Um, yeah, we will, actually. That's a good call, General, on, uh, on that. I was kind of thinking that, but uh, I'm glad you said it because that kind of solidified it for me.
Okay. This is why um, on another build I recently quoted, I was like, how do you feel about soft tubing? Because <clears throat> it's so much easier. Also, having a radiator on the bottom kind of sucks, but it's neither here nor there. Okay, <clears throat> so I'd say that time we drained a significantly larger portion of fluid out, which is good. <clears throat> Question is, oh, I definitely don't want to take that radiator out. I think we're gonna do that. We're gonna call that, um, Success there and uh, fill it back up again. Okay. Oh, that oh, ring got squished. Just go in there. Okay. No squishing of O rings. What's just part of it, uh, RK? <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right, let's see if this thing holds water again. Yeah, I've already had to do this once before. It's just, uh, it's still just a pain. Just being a baby. Okay, we're full again. Let's hope that my seals are good.
No leaks. Oops, got a little cavitation in there. Don't want that. Well, the water still looks kind of pink. It looks a lot better. All right, now that we've done this like three or four times, what's our feeling on basically disassembling the entire water cooling system to get the rest out before we fill it up again? Okay, sorry chat, got a, had a phone call there. Um, if you want to change the color, it'd be super hard to get the, all the red liquid out. Maybe if I wasn't being so lazy, it wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> <clears throat> you can do it probably a lot faster, well, a lot faster and messier, but you have to like, basically disassemble the entire coolant system. I don't really feel like doing that, if I'm being honest. And yeah, that was a very like bright, strong red color. So it is very, even a little bit of it being left, like you can see it still creates a lot of, it still makes it look very pink. to disassemble the whole computer, you know? You know, it's my personal computer. I don't care if it looks a little pink. All right. What do we think though, chat? Should I just bite the bullet and disassemble the whole thing? I stop being lazy? It's gonna take a lot more time to do that. Okay. 
Let's do the same thing we just did. And get some more water out. Okay. Did that. I guess we could do the same thing on the opposite side now too. And that'll get like the vast majority of it out. So we basically pushed out as much water as we could off the bottom side, like out of the bottom radiator and stuff. It's already starting to come back up though. Do that one more time there. You're back. What's up, Space Face? How we doing? We're still uh, we're still working on replacing the coolant because I'm being lazy. This is as fast as I can pump. as much as we're going to get out of that. I think what we can do now is try to do the same thing on the top. So basically everything <clears throat> below like the CPU, <clears throat> so like GPU and this bottom radiator, we've kind of tried to force as much of that coolant out as we can with just pressure, not like draining it, draining it, like picking it up and turning it and shaking it upside down or anything like that. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, but to the top side. I'm trying to just think the best way to do this without spilling anywhere. Uh, I don't really wanna to have to take that out, do I? Yes, we'll take this top one out that the CPU is connected to. Uh, and then we're just gonna have to try and catch as much of the liquid as we can.
Okay. Got that two pretty well drained. We'll get the rest of that out of there. bite of dinner. Mm. It's good stuff. All right, now we're going to try and force everything that's in this top radiator out and into the reservoir. We're gonna empty the reservoir one more time just in case there's quite a bit in that uh, top radiator. We don't want it getting high enough that it starts feeding down into the pump at all because that could force it down into the, the bottom radiator. Okay, good to go there. Here goes nothing. I wonder if the pressure is low enough that it's just releasing up here. Ah! What the heck? My pump just fell apart. Thanks, baby. Please set that down on the floor. Starting to get some small amount to come out. I don't know that we're going to be able to drain this as effectively as we did on the bottom. like we thought it would, we hoped it would. Okay. Let's top one back on. Oh, whoops. Hopefully this goes to show you guys that uh, liquid cooling systems are not for the faint of heart. This is like the lazy edition of replacing your coolant. in now too.
Okay. It's all put back together. Put some more water in. And depending on the color, we might just call, call this complete. Yeah, what's up, Mark? Welcome back in. So we've made some made some progress on getting all of the uh, getting all of the red coolant out without fully ripping apart our coolant system. However, the moment I turn this on, it might turn. That honestly doesn't look that bad. Like in terms of where we started to where we are now. It's pretty light pink. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'll stick to a regular AIO. Yeah. is that I'm taking this to Loot Fest now because they wanted a second computer there. So I kind of need to just maybe bite the bullet and tear the whole thing apart. I really don't want to. Uh, 
but I kind of might have to. By this time next week, you'll have it all clear. All right. Uh, I'm not shipping it to Loop Fest. I'm driving to Loop Fest, so I'm taking it with me to Loop Fest this year. I originally was just going to take the PC um, that we we built uh, either yeah last week um, to Loop Fest, and then the Loop Fest people were like, "Hey, is there any way you can bring a second computer um, and make it work?" So. I was like, um, well, I was like, yeah, I guess I can bring my personal gaming PC. It's strong enough to game and stream from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I was like shipping it, shipping it, I would have to like fully drain it and empty it. But since I'm not, I don't really have to do that. I'm more concerned about the fact that it's pink. Granted, this isn't going to be like one of the show-off builds. This isn't going to be like a show-off build that I put, um, you know, somewhere for people to stare at. But still, people are going to see it. So I should probably just stop being a baby. And, uh, and actually do the thing. Do it properly. I mean, either way, we were gonna have to kind of do this a few times, just because of how strong the red is. If anything gets caught in the components, we don't have like a, the ability to just use like a sink to flush it real good. I don't trust the water here. We have kind of hard water in Nampa, so I don't really wanna use tap water to flush stuff out. So, it might be that time. We might just have to, might just have to bite the bullet here. All right. Craig, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. How you doing today? I'm gonna get my power supply out of the way here just so I have a little more of my workbench space to work on. What are you up to today? this bottom side. time just to see if there's anything still left in there. All right. I guess as much as we're going to get out of there. 
Cool. Put this guy back. Now let's see. I don't remember method for taking off best method for taking off this bottom radiator. Can I show it from the side? Yes, I can. Oops. Oops. There you go. Is that you able to see that pretty well? Okay, so what I'm thinking is, if I can undo the bolts on the bottom, if I undo this here, then I think I just have to pull out these two bolts and then these clips and the whole radiator should just come out at that point. And then that should make it super easy to drain what little should be left in that bottom radiator. Okay. All right, so now we gotta undo these guys. Now, remembering back to when I built it, these guys were the most painful to uh, to install. So I gotta be. I don't want to have to redo them too much, but I don't think I have much of a choice but to pull them out. That's the front one, so we'll keep that one up front. I should have put big red on Lazy Susan. Um, I could have, but I didn't really feel like it. Just because Lazy Susan takes up so much room and I just spilled some water. Okay, very nice thing about those uh, Chromax fans is they just kind of disconnect on the backside. It might be a pain to get them back, um, but disconnecting them wasn't too hard. Okay, I need to, I need to go into the little kitchenette thing and try and drain this fluid out and then I'll be right back. I can probably talk to you guys in there, but I'll sound like a crazy person. Okay, I don't know if you guys can still hear me in here. You probably can. Um, I shut the door into the little kitchenette area so that I can uh, talk to you guys. <laughs> okay, that was actually a decent amount of of liquid that just came out, that's awesome. Could you guys actually hear me in there? Uh, the bottom radiator has uh, intake fans.
Okay. So now, fun part is, wait, there's a tiny bit of liquid at the bottom. Let's, let's get that out. Forgot that I spilled that out of one of the tubes. There's nothing down here, it's just, might as well wipe it up while we got it exposed. Do you feel exposed? Okay. We can hear. And if someone just joined the stream, they have many questions. I'm sure that they do. Okay. So hopefully, we can get these guys all reconnected. The little tails on these Chromax fans are super short um, before they like hit their little jumpers, um, which is nice in some ways, but also makes reconnecting just a little difficult. Come on, there's the last one. There we go. Okay. So now this bottom plate slides back in. Click it down like that. Easy peasy. Should have done this like an hour ago, but what's the entertainment in that? Oh, is that not lined up very well? Okay. That's in part way at least. Okay. Okay. So that is fully reattached there. Now we can get the rest of that liquid out of there. Oh, don't drip it down. Just pick it up. Bit of liquid on the fans. No big deal. Tiny bit of liquid in here. No big deal either. Great. Totally fine. Okay. Now I'll get this tube back in. Hopefully. One of these guys, I had some serious trouble with um, getting the, uh, what's it called? Getting the like fitting thing on here tight, like started. I think it was this one. So if you're wondering why I didn't want to take it out. This is why. Don't need drops of water in there. I don't, I really don't. Uh, okay. So the problem is this is such a tight <clears throat> bend because of the height of these tubes, like these inlets over here, um, that I basically had to ha start the bend on this side really, really short and it made it very difficult to get these compression fittings tightened in a way that wouldn't leak. So I'm definitely gonna have to do another, I'm gonna have to do a pressure test on this system before I, uh, before I uh, fire it up again. Like for real fire it up, not just before I run it. Run the, the pump probably, but I probably should do both. I should do it before I even run the pump. I may have missed this, but is your goal to have colorless coolant? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be colorless. I mean, I wouldn't mind having red dye again. It just kind of seems to stain stuff. 
And I don't really feel like buying more coolant. When you don't need to pay for coolant, you can just use water. <laughs> you can just use distilled water, folks. Um, GPU should be fine. CPU should be fine, but we can at least drain out with little bits in there since we can see it. Yeah, I mean, the point of this wasn't necessarily to like get rid of the color. The point of this was to, of the exercise, was to um, replace the coolant just because it's it's getting older. I've had this coolant in here for a while. Oh my gosh. It's a lot more fluid than I thought. Here, she's that to wipe that clean. You getting me over here? Not really. I guess we got a little bit down at the bottom. This poor corner fan keeps getting keeps getting water dropped on it. And there's a little bit of liquid back. You're buying this radiator, but that's uh, it's not coming out. We're not dealing with that. Okay. It's all the coolant out of there. Put that back. put the bottom CPU one on there. <clears throat> we do a pressure test with the pump. How long do you wait to see? Uh, I usually give it like um, 15 minutes or so. I mean, if it's if it's bad, like if it's really bad, you'll notice pretty quickly, like within 10 or 15 seconds, depending on how egregious the, the leak is. But um, yeah, if it doesn't start like immediately dropping pressure, then I'll give it like 15, 20 minutes, as long as it's still holding some amount of pressure. Like even if it's not like the exact amount you originally put in there, then you're usually okay. Okay. Let's see if I can do this in a way where don't spill it anywhere. Okay. I got my little gallon bucket here. Cool. That tube is emptied. Same thing essentially with this guy. Okay. That one's good too. Let's get a little bit more paper towels put underneath this radiator as we pull it out. Don't expect much to come out, but you never know. Bring this down. Okay. So now, gotta take all these bolts out of the top. There's a lot. Two. 
Three. Ten. Okay, now's when I have to start supporting this thing, just in case. Eleven. And here's the last one. All the bolts out. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with this. You should have put big red on the least. Oh, I already read that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take this radiator to the sink again. Well, I guess I'm gonna take this radiator to the sink instead of just like I did with the last one. And then we should be pretty much good to just refill the coolant system. to the kitchenette so I don't sound like a crazy person talking to myself. guy is very empty now. Um, the last thing that I want to do is get that last bit of pink out of the uh, reservoir because it's a decent like volume of liquid that's gonna be also be pink. So I'm gonna push this back to being forward I think. crushing or destroying. Okay. All right. And I think I basically need to turn this thing all the way down on its face. Thing is quite heavy. Can you scoot it forward further? Just gotta be real careful not to drop it on myself. Anything like that. There we go. Scary part over. Now that it's very much clear of, of all the old coolant, let's reassemble it. Uh, I gotta 
these guys back in. So at this point, I think I've gotten enough At this point, I think I got enough cooling out that it's gonna basically look clear. It shouldn't have much of a pink hue to it at all. Okay, I'm gonna get these bolts all started and then I'm gonna get the tubes in to make sure, cause this does have some movement left and right. I just wanna make sure that it's in the right spot for the length of these tubes before I tighten it all the way up again. Got those there. Now, going to there we go. This guy started. Okay, got that one started. Good. Nice and tight. Does not feel good. This side. Okay. That's better. Okay. This one. All right, all of our cooling lines are reconnected. So, um, we can do a quick pressure test to make sure everything's working. And then, should be good to go. We technically, we could do like another drain cycle on it if we really feel like it. Like we'll check, we'll look at the color and see, but I don't think we're gonna need to. Uh oh, see? Yep. I told, remember when I said that those bottom ones were a problem? Let's 
make sure I know which one it is. It's the back one. Okay, so remember how I said those bottom ones were kind of a kind of problem children? This one back here is not airtight. See how that does. All right, we're gonna put it up to like 0.3 bar. Okay, I don't know how well y'all can see that. It's kind of small, but we're at just on the like higher side of 0.3 bar there. So we're gonna let it sit for a, like a minute or two. We'll take a look at it. If it, uh, if it doesn't move at all, then uh, we'll probably call it good. Yeah, it's, it's holding pretty well right now. jugs over here out of the way. Got some sound commands. I gotta redo all my Freaking cable management back here. I'm a bot. Out of a fan hub, too. I feel like it's actually in there.
How does that not want to connect? Bro, these flat, I know you can't see it. These flat uh, RGB connectors are the absolute worst thing ever invented. All right, we're still holding the exact same pressure. I'm gonna call that good. No, that wasn't the, the normal, like 15 minutes or whatever. But considering this was already like a completed system beforehand, I have a lot more faith in it than I would a new system. Okay. Put this back in our box. Put it away. Hopefully the last time of the day. Let's fill her up. Bazinga. We're doing it. We're really doing it. takes a lot of water. Hands are cramping. Ugh. Okay. That's uh, mostly full so far. So let's get our power supply back out. What did I do with it? I do my power supply.
Oh, it's over here. Okay, donor power supply reconnected. Checking for any leaks. Don't see any leaks at the moment. Fill our water bottle and fill the reservoir all the way back up. Right, fill it back up. Now we're moving. Having that extra head of water for the pump definitely helps. It has a very, very mild, like pinkish hue, but it's almost not noticeable. And it's only gonna get lighter as we keep refilling this, so. I think we're gonna call it that. Okay, looks like we're starting to finally really fill up the radiators, at least this bottom one. All this bubbles coming through there. GPU similar. There's a bunch more, bunch more stuff that just got released out of there.
think I got a... It's starting to sag a little bit. I might use a little thing for it to keep it from sagging anymore from that GPU. Yeah, the GPU was starting to sag just a little bit, so probably better late than never on putting a, putting a thing on it. What's up, Hatfield? How we doing? All right. Well, the coolant, I would say, is officially replaced. That looks quite clear. Besides a couple of drops of like red in there, but there's not really much I can do about that. And we'll get it filled the rest of the way. I'll make it a little bit quieter. Like that. And that thing's done. Just hanging, glad to hear it. Playing games or anything tonight? All right, she's good to go. Ready to play games again in no time. It'll take a while of running the pump to get all of the bubbles out. Like if you look through in here, I mean, you guys can't see it because the camera can't get that close, but you can still see some bubbles coming in and out of uh, some of the tubes. But other than that, source and motors. Ooh. What are you, uh, what are you doing with a motor? Okay, that is all good to go. This cover still. Might have a bad, oh, on the garage furnace, okay. I thought you were talking like vehicle motors or something. Okay. Well, I think at this point I just gotta, just gotta put it back together, right? Didn't realize how much my GPU had started to sag. It's not terrible. It's certainly not broken yet, but I'm afraid to overcorrect it, you know? Maybe over time. I think a part of it is just the weight of these things. Like it's a big block. So the weight of it over time, it just kind of slowly starts to, sta starts to sag. 
So hopefully over time I can kind of slowly lift it back up too. You never know. I need some new paper towels for my office soon. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Um, I'm pretty much going to just close it up here real soon and uh, we'll get it we'll get it ready to ready to game here in no time. So I think we're gonna call the stream here and we'll see you guys on the next one. See you guys on the next stream. Hope you guys have a good rest of your night. Appreciate you hanging out. It wasn't really like a super exciting sort of stream day, but you know, hopefully, hopefully some people learned something and enjoyed it a little bit. And yeah, we finished putting that that thing together. I think it looks, I think it looks really good. Um, it's nice and nice and clear water now. Uh, it doesn't look as incredible as the red we uh we did need to replace that coolant it was it was definitely overdue so we'll see you guys on the next one i appreciate it 